Here I've got what I think is a pretty nice little geometry problem. So let's see what we have. We have a unit square, so that means a square with side length one. I've put it within the Cartesian coordinate plane. That is, I've made coordinates at all of the vertices. So the origin is over here, one zero is here, one one is here, and zero one is over there. Next, we've got some circles inside of this square. Some of them are quarter circles and one of them is an entire circle. So we have this quarter circle of radius one, which I have in yellow. So it's centered at the origin. And so that means it goes through this bottom right vertex and that top left vertex. Furthermore, we have a circle centered at the point one one and its radius is such that it is tangent to this yellow circle. So that circle is in orange. And that's a quarter circle as well. Then finally, between the orange quarter circle and the yellow quarter circle, we fit an entire circle which I have red. And it's tangent to each of those circles as well as the right hand side of this square. And our goal is to find the radius of this red circle. Okay, so let's see maybe how we can do that. So I'll start by giving the center of this red circle a name. So I'll make that a blue dot here, and I'll say that center is at the point P, which is H comma K. Okay, and then maybe we'll say that this thing has radius little r. So that means our goal is to find little r. Okay, now we're going to do that by creating some equations. And those equations are going to be built off the distance between this point P and some other points in this plane. So let's maybe go ahead and do that. Let's notice that the distance between P and the origin is fairly easy to calculate, but we're not going to calculate just the distance. We're going to calculate the distance squared so that it's a little bit easier. There will be no square root involved. Okay, so let's first start off calculating this distance using the fact that we've got coordinate h comma k. So since we've got coordinate h comma k, we'll have h squared plus k squared is this distance squared. Remember, it's the x-coordinate differences squared, but since we've got zero for this x-coordinate and then the y-coordinate differences squared. Okay, now let's calculate it a different way. So, I can also notice that it's going to be the distance from this origin to this point on the yellow circle plus this radius of our red circle which is unknown. But luckily enough, we know the radius of this yellow circle is 1, then the radius of this red circle we have taken to be r which means this distance is 1 plus r. But if we square it, we get that that is 1 plus r quantity squared. Okay, great. Now, let's calculate the distance from p to this point 1, 1. And again, we won't calculate the distance, but we'll calculate the distance squared. So starting with the distance formula, we know it's going to be h minus 1 squared plus k minus 1 squared. So let's write that down. h minus 1 squared plus k minus 1 squared. Again, no square root because we're finding this distance squared. So next, we want to calculate the distance a different way. So let's notice that it's going to be 1 radii of this red circle plus the radius of this orange circle. Now maybe as a little bit of a homework exercise, I'll let you guys think about what the radius of this orange circle is, but I'll just tell you that it's the square root of 2 minus 1. Maybe post in the comments why it's the square root of 2 minus 1. So that means this entire distance is r plus the square root of 2 minus 1. So that means we get this is equal to r plus the square root of 2 minus 1 quantity squared. 
So that gives us two equations involving h, k, and r. But we've got three unknowns. So that means we probably need a third equation. And actually, this third equation is not too hard to get. So let's notice that this distance from here to here is equal to another copy of the radius. And furthermore, this coordinate right here is not too hard to calculate. So let's notice that coordinate has x part 1 and y part k. So that means the distance from h comma k to 1 comma k is equal to r. But that means that h plus r is equal to 1. So remember, we're going h units along the x-axis, and then r additional units along the x-axis to get one unit along the x-axis. But it's pretty easy to see that this means that h is equal to 1 minus r, and that's our third equation. So now let's start doing some simplification. I'll start by rewriting this first equation. I have h squared plus k squared equals 1 plus r quantity squared. The next, I'll take this second equation, but then expand it out a bit. So I've got h squared minus 2h plus 1 plus k squared minus 2k plus 1 equals r plus the square root of 2 minus 1 times r. But really, I don't want to deal with this h squared and this k squared unless I have to. But I can get rid of those by subtracting these two equations. Maybe that's going to help me out. So let's subtract these two equations and see what we get. So we'll get 2h plus 2k plus 2. OK. But then notice that this right-hand side is something squared. I'll call it a squared. This left-hand side is something squared. So if we take their difference, we get a squared minus b squared. But let's recall that a squared minus b squared is equal to a minus b times a plus b, just by the difference of squares formula. So that actually is going to allow us some nice simplification. So we have this is equal to 1 plus r minus r plus root 2 minus 1. That's like a minus b. And then 1 plus r plus r plus root 2 minus 1. That's like a plus b. So let's see what simplification that gives us. So that's going to give us, let's see, r minus r is 0. And then we'll have 2 minus the square root of 2 for this first one. And then over here, we'll have, let's see, 2r plus the square root of 2 after all is said and done there. So notice we've got 2h plus 2k is equal to that guy right there. OK, so let's maybe summarize what we have at the top of the next board, and we'll move on to the next step. So on the last board, after some work, we ended up with the following three equations. So we have h equals 1 minus r, h squared plus k squared is r plus 1 squared, and then finally 2h plus 2k minus 2 is equal to this 2 minus root 2 times 2r plus root 2. Well, let's maybe see if we can simplify this third equation. So I've got 2h plus 2k minus 2 is equal to, let's see what we get when we multiply that out. We'll have 2 times 2 minus root 2 times r. So that's what we get from r times this stuff. And then we'll have plus 2 root 2 minus 2. OK, but now some simplification can be done. So notice that this minus 2 here can cancel this minus 2 here. And then everything left has a factor of 2. So we can divide everything by 2. And that's going to leave us with h plus k is equal to 2 minus root 2 times r plus the square root of 2.
Next, we'll plug in this value for h. That is, we'll replace h with 1 minus r. And that's going to give us k in terms of r. So let's see what we've got. We have 1 minus r plus k equals 2 minus root 2 times r plus the square root of 2 like that. Okay, so now moving everything except for the k over, we have k is equal to, well that's gonna be three minus the square root of two times r for moving this r over, and then plus the square root of two minus one. So that's re the relationship between k and r. And then next, we can take this value for k, this value for h, and plug it into this quadratic equation, giving us a quadratic equation for r. So that's going to be 1 minus r quantity squared plus, well, we need k squared, but that's a bit of a handful. We've got 3 minus root 2 times r plus the square root of 2 minus 1 quantity squared equals r plus 1 quantity squared, like that. Now we've got our quadratic equation for r, and we can finally start to finish it off. We finally got this nice quadratic equation for r. Well, maybe it's not super nice. Now we're ready to expand it and then solve it, maybe using the quadratic formula. So expanding this out, we'll have r squared minus 2r plus 1 plus 3 minus the square root of 2 squared times r squared plus 2 times 3 minus the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 minus 1 times r. So that's like our cross term. And then plus the square root of 2 minus 1 squared equals r squared plus 2r plus 1. But we can actually get some simplification occurring here. Notice that this, cal this value of r squared, this value of r squared will cancel. And then this one and then this one will also cancel because they're on opposite sides of the equation. So next, we can move this 2r over, and it will turn into a negative 4r over on the other side of the equation, leaving us, leaving us with a 0 on the right-hand side. Okay, so let's see if we can do some simplification here. So that tells us we have 3 minus the square root of 2 times r squared. So that's from this term right here, plus... 2 times 3 minus root 2 times root 2 minus 1 minus 4 times r. So that would be like our r term. And then finally, plus root 2 minus 1 squared equals 0. Now we need to do a bit of expansion. And I realized I forgot a square there. And now we can start simplifying this. So let's start with this object right here. So we'll have 9 plus 2, that's going to be 11, minus 6 times the square root of 2. That's what we get if we square that out. Then, multiplying these two out will give us, let's see, it'll be negative 3 minus 2, so that's negative 5. And then 3 times the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2, so that's plus 4 times the square root of 2. Then finally, multiplying this out will give us 2 plus 1, that is 3, minus 2 times the square root of 2. Okay, so now let's bring all of that down. We have 11 minus 6 times the square root of 2 times r squared. That's our first term. And then we'll have plus, well, let's see. It's going to be 2 times negative 5 minus 4. So that'll be negative 14 plus 20 times the square root of 2 times r. And then finally, plus 3 minus 2 times the square root of 2 equals 0. So now let's start solving this with the quadratic formula. So we'll have r is equal to 14 minus 20 times the square root of 2 
plus minus the square root of, well, it's gonna be b squared. So that'll give us 14 minus 20 root two quantity squared. I changed the sign there, but it doesn't really matter because we're squaring it. And then minus four times a times c. So that's gonna be minus four times 11 minus six times the square root of two, three minus two times the square root of two. That's all under the radical. And then we need to divide that by two times a. So that'll be 22 minus 12 times the square root of two. Okay, now let's bring that up to the top and then we'll finally finish it off. So on the last board, we ended up with this monstrosity. Now let's start simplifying it. Well, I first wanna notice that here we've got a multiple of four and here we have a multiple of four. So we can bring those outside of the square root. That'll leave me with a two outside of the square root. This one's just gonna scrub away. And then this 14 will turn into seven and then this 20 will turn into 10. So we just divide them by two because they're being squared right there. And then after that, we can factor a two out of the entire numerator and cancel it with the denominator. So that's gonna get rid of that. That'll change that into a 10. That'll change that into a seven. And then here we'll have an 11 and a six. So let's write that down to see what we have now. We have seven minus 10 times the square root of two plus minus the square root of seven minus 10 times the square root of two squared minus, now this product here, which we'll calculate in just a second, but now in the denominator, we'll have 11 minus six times the square root of two. Now let's multiply this out to see what we have. We'll have three times 11, that's 33. And then 33 is going to be added to six times two times the square root of two squared. 24 plus 33 is 57. So that's what we get for everything not attached to a square root of two. So we'll have 11 times two, that's 22 times the square root of two plus 18 times the square root of two. So that's gonna be minus 40 times the square root of two. So that's what we get here. Okay, now we probably want to multiply this guy right here out. So let's see what we get when we do that. We'll have 49 plus 100 times two. So 100 times two is 200, so that's gonna be 249 and then that'll be minus 140 times the square root of two. Okay, so now let's bring that down to see what we have. We have seven minus 10 times the square root of two plus minus 249 minus 57, that's 192. And then we'll have negative 140 minus negative 40, so that's gonna be plus 100 times the square root of two. That's all over 11 minus six times the square root of two. And that's actually where we're gonna leave it. As a homework exercise, I'll let you guys decide if we need the positive or negative root, and then we have the solution. I will say that there's a little bit more that you can do if you want a prettier answer. And that is, you can denest this square root into something nicer. And in fact, I'll give you the solution if you wanna to work towards it. So what you end up with is nine minus four times the square root of two over 49. That might seem a little bit crazy, but if you notice, when you take this denominator and maybe rationalize it, you'll get 49. That's because 11 minus six times the square root of two times 11 plus six times the square root of two is 11 squared minus 36 times two, which is 72, but 11 squared is 121 minus 72 is equal to 49. So we see that 49 appearing right there. So now you just have to work out how to denest those radicals. There's a bunch of ways to do that, but I think this video has gone on long enough, and that's a good place to stop.